All right. I have to be completely honest here. Do that. I unfortunately stopped watching football once my kids were born. Because good for you. Obviously, it's tiring. No, good and, for you. It's a lot of wasted are, energy. Kids are family demanding. <laughs> uh, I grew up, my favorite player was Art Monk. Uh, wow. Yeah, we were. Uh, we <laughs> Who's grew, a receiver? Yeah, receiver for the Redskins. That's right, man. Uh, we were, New back York, right we were from New York, but I had two older brothers, so we hated the Giants. Oh, wow. Uh, I don't know. I, you're a handful of people where that's who they favor. No disrespect to Monk, but it's like no, 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 no. It's, it's like, like a no, random you know, you like talk shit, usually like, like all stars and yeah. pro bowlers. Like that's like, wild. We were like Art Monk, and then I would have fights with my friends about you know, Michael Irvin versus blah blah blah. blah. <laughs> it's dope. Uh, but anytime a friend friends of mine that were like into football, even playing fantasy football, would say, "You gotta get," or not me. I wasn't playing fantasy football, but you know, like Aaron Foster, yeah, yeah. number one pick. Gotta get him. Gotta get him. Yeah. So I knew. You were incredible, I incredible, um, I and you are. And now I'm getting introduced to you officially as a hip hop artist. Um, and I got your project uh, in late February. It's your debut on Mass Appeal. Uh, it's a great album. Thanks. Uh, vocal wise, <laughs> flow wise, music wise, uh, and you're and now you're being introduced to us as a uh, Bobby Fino. Yeah. And I want to welcome you to the Library of Tamanico. Thank Bob, you for being I appreciate here. you having me, man. I appreciate you having me for sure. Um, so this is it. Like you were, so you said you you talked about this. You know, obviously in other interviews, like seven years old, you started playing football. Mm -hmm. um, but you're now doing a new art, a different art form. So what was what were you listening to as a kid that kind of hip hop always spoke to you? And like, what was that album that said, "All right, if this doesn't work out, I want to make this album." Got you. Um, I never really thought about it like that, right? Like, I think we like to compartmentalize humans, right? And so it's like, if you go to the grocery store and like the person that's bagging your groceries, like they, they have goals, they have dreams, they have aspirations. They didn't grow up wanting to be a grocery bagger. That's where they found themselves. That's right. might be like, you know, the conduit to the next part of their life. Um, uh, every, everybody's like that. And if you view everybody like that, one, I feel like it would be more empathy in the world, but, um, you'll start to view the world in a different light. And so uh, it was never like I, it, like music was on the back burner to me. I've been making music since I was 12 years old. Wow. Like I've been writing since I was seven. Um, granted, it was objectively horrible back then. <laughs> but it's like, you know, I was expressing myself as a young kid and the things that I saw. I remember, you know, I grew up in a domestically violent household and I remember writing a whole poem about uh, me Experiencing that stuff, seeing uh -huh. that as a young kid, like and how it affects you, like, um, so it was like, like I said, music was never on the back burner to me. It just wasn't my vehicle to get out of the situation that I was. I knew football was like an immediate, like I knew I was better than everybody in my city. Right. I knew I was better, like you know, I knew I had an opportunity, and so I pursued it. Um, and so, it, it, like when I was growing up, like to answer your question. I was inspired by a lot of stuff. <clears throat> My father was from South Central, you know, he was from Carson, California. Oh, yeah. Um, bordered Compton. Um, and that's where that's where his side of the family from. My mother's side of the family is from a small town in it's called Springer, New Mexico. It's like one stoplight. Um, and so it's like she grew up with a different kind of music taste, but they used to play vinyl records together and I fell in love with music in general. So that's she used awesome. to play like the Eagles and Three Dog Night and Elton John and my dad used to play Confunction and Earth, Wind and Fire and Parliament. Like that's the kind of pedigree I grew up around. I just grew up around love and music, and so it wasn't necessarily a genre that I fell in love. It was more um, just like the storytelling aspect of it. Oh, uh, talk about uh, you, you. You're from Albuquerque. Mm. Uh, kind of talk about the the music scene. I mean, outside of home. Right. Uh, I mean, what were your friends kind of listening to? Was it just hip hop? Was it rock? You know, were were you the most like kind of diverse in terms of <clears throat> genres of music that listening to amongst your friends? Right. Yeah. No, I didn't really share like my musical taste with my friends like that. Like as far as like how depth it, and in depth it was, but like for like you know we like as a kids you follow whatever's trending and was hot. But like for us when I was growing up, like we were real into like the East Coast underground hip hop scene. Like I'm talking like lyricist lounge type oh, wow, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like cool. so like I loved the lyricism of rap. Like I fell in love with Talib Kweli and Most Def. Um, like that's the kind of the, the music I was influenced by, like to to start making music, like so I was like socially conscious, um, and then as you grow up, you know your, your taste changes uh, and you you thirst for for other things. Um, I was listening to an episode of uh, of Now What, 
Oh, uh, man, appreciate it. With Snoop. And yeah, I think yeah, yeah. and I think yeah. something that, you know, Snoop obviously is a incredible artist, a incredible character. Yeah. Uh, but something that kind of really stood out to me is you 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 talked about kind of the importance of platform and how kind of people don't realize the power of their platform until when they, even when they're on it. Mm-hmm. Um how did you how did you learn about the power of your platform and and what was like what was the decision making in terms of like what you wanted to do with it when you if or when you got to this this height? <clears throat> Um, I always look at my platform as like this. Like I, I never really view myself as like a super famous person, right? Like I don't I'm not, right? Um I'm moderately recognizable. Like every now and then people will come up to me and say they appreciate what I did. Um, but if there's any eyes on me, like the the most important thing to me isn't that. The most important thing to me is uh when I'm gone and like I'm laying in my box. Right. It's like when my kids looking down at me, like were they proud of the life that I led and were they proud of the things that I taught them? And like that's that's the most important thing to me. Like whoever's in the front row of your funeral. Mm. You talked about uh, you talked about um, writing lyrics. Yeah. You know when you were twelve. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm assuming much better than what I could do because I have no. Not, I'm pretty I sure. Not it's horrible. A, uh, you know, the funny story about that is um, you remember that uh, hurricane that hit Houston around 2000? What was it, like 2015, 16, something like that? I. Yeah, it was no, a big, I, I, big I, I hurricane, know. and my my house flooded five feet. It was five feet. It was five feet underwater, and we didn't know it was gonna be that bad. And we we, we went to my father's house where it was like north, and it, we knew that it wasn't gonna hit that bad. Um, but one of the things that that got washed away was I had like a I'm talking about a bag full of journals that I've been writing since I was ah uh, uh, stuff probably uh, twelve like ten years old, and it was uh, like. Horrible writing. <laughs> it was like horrible, but it was like dope to see like where my mind was, right, right. and it was like I, I looked at them, and it was like really bad rhymes. But it was just dope to see like a, like a young kid expressing himself. But it was funny. So who was the first person <clears throat> or that you kind of officially shared your? your my way? sister. Your sister. Okay. My sister. We shared a love, and that's kind of like a, a, a real bond in our relationship. Is like music. We like we love we love music, and like we share a bond and like a, a very common interest of like hip hop in general. About like. What the culture should be portraying, and beautifully now she's a she's an activist in, in Atlanta. And she's a school teacher. Oh, nice! And so she does a lot of grassroots roots work. She got a master's degree, and she's um, doing really good things in the community. Um, and so uh, a lot of that was centered in our upbringing, our upbringing, and, and the love for hip hop. You, you, you know, you're, I listen to your music, and and <clears throat> and, and you're not, a, you know, you, you, there's always that worry, right? You're like, oh, he's a he's an ex. NFL star yeah, who's sure. trying to figure out, you know, trying to, you know, yeah. he's he's basically, you know, he's he's capitalizing on his celebrity, like For you sure. know. Uh, but you listen to it, and your flow is great, your rhymes work, your rhymes are great. Thank you. Um, like I said, I think the the music selection works really well with with it. Uh, and then you also do stuff that I appreciate, where you you let the track breathe. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, not to, you know, you're just like, all right, I'm gonna let this doesn't deserve a rhyme here. Um, so can you take us into this like? creative process for you. Mm-hmm. Are you listening to the beat? Are you writing? Or do you have a bunch of songs you already have? And then you're waiting for that perfect beat. How does it work for you in terms of writing? Uh, so I always tell people, man, like I'm going to, like regardless of if I put anything out or not, I'll be making music until I'm not here no more. It's not, it's not anything that um, like I'm, I'm doing for a certain reason, like a notoriety standpoint. Like I like I love it. Like it's therapeutic. It's it's a part of who I am. I've always made music throughout my entire career. I made music. Um, I just didn't think it was at the quality of level that I wanted to put into it. Right. That's why I never released anything while I was playing. But um, the process is 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 like me and it's like uh, one of my dudes who who lives with me. He's one of my best friends and he lives with me. Um, and another guy that like we we all kind of like collab on. I hate to call them beats, but they're compositions mm-hmm. because it takes a lot of musicianship. I'm talking about we we doing the keys, uh, we outsource like horns, we do live drums sometimes. We do you know what I'm saying like we do it's, it's music like because I fell in love. That's like that's what I grew up on. I grew up on vinyls. I grew up on yeah. Earth, Wind, and Fire. So like I fell in love with the composition of like structure. Like that's what I love, um, and so that that process has kind of guided my penmanship as well, right? And so like it's just what I feel, and like, people write what they feel, right? People write what they feel. Um, and so whatever I'm feeling, um, it's kind of like manifested through the music as well. And it kind of works as a system. So like, we'll have like a template and then I'll write to it. And then, um, I'll lay a 
skeleton down, and then we'll build on the music oh, wow. after that. Yeah, I mean, you, 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 I, I totally listen to your music, and the and there's definitely a you, you could tell there's there's great equal care to yeah we care. not just the flow no, but I care. To, you know, just, you know <laughs> no, I appreciate it man um, I appreciate you noticing I want to take you to a, 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 a an older track so to say uh, Suicide Note hey that's that's what's crazy about I'm gonna let you like that's what's crazy about today's generation that that track can't be I mean, it's not older, older no 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 yeah, but yeah. no that's a real thing right so it's like that came out in 2018 I know it's I know. 2019 I mean, like I remember like it was like to put that album together as a flamingo and Koval that's what yeah. talking about, right so like it was my first project that I released and. It took a, around a good 11, 12 months to put it all together. I'm talking about we flew to Nashville. I got musicians, horns, and strings, and piano, and like, like real, like it took a lot of care and work to put into it, that album. And then you release it, and people are enjoying it. And then like a week later, I get a tweet. He's like, man, I, I'm still listening to the Flew and Cobalt, nice. man. Like when you putting something else out, I'm like, are you yeah, no, no, kidding no, no, me, no, dog? It's true. Like, what you <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, but it's a real thing. Yeah, that's, yeah. Like, that's how music is digested nowadays. Right. When we used to have you know, cassette tapes and CDs, it's like, yeah. you're, you're like, I just did a project. Yeah, like, we're like, you know, how put long? Put a lot into yeah, it, like, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm not going to ask you what's next at the end. No, no, no. I got I got some next. But, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I think a, a, a lyrics that really stand out, because, and it's really because as an outsider, what I see, well, you know, and what you see writing, what I, anyone sees writing as an artist is therapy, but... I mean, you have this great line where you go, painting pictures with words was therapeutic at first. Now I'm depending on this beautiful curse. It's like I need it more than I love it. Um, can you talk about these lyrics and, and why why has it become this, quote, unquote, beautiful curse for you? Right. Um, I appreciate you, first of all, like listening to it to the point of like taking something from it because I feel like as, a, as an artist, that's all you want is somebody to feel what you're writing, good or bad. You just want somebody to feel. Um, but... Uh, Everybody, everybody has their story, man. You know, everybody goes through their hardships. Um, but for me, growing up, a lot of how I internalized this stuff uh, is how I wrote it. I just wrote, I just wrote my thoughts. I felt like I always felt like I was like a narrator of my own life. And I, everybody is kind of in a sense mm -hmm. in their head, but like I um, expressed that artistically. And so um, it got to the point where it's like if something was off in my life, it's because I wasn't writing, I wasn't writing stuff down. Uh. And and that's where that's where the line comes. Like I need it more than I love it. So like so like it says, a freedom of it I covet, but when it's gone, I get sick to my stomach. That was the next line, and um, that's that's kind of how it's been in my life. Like when something's off, I feel like I'm not I'm not writing. Mm. And like everybody has their vice or that or their um uh, their getaway. Right. And that's my that's my getaway. That's like some people like to paint. Some people like to sing some people like to dance some people like to take a walk like i write like i love i love writing is it writing on the spot or is it more like something happened you take some time to digest it and then you go to like you know her office or something you know like both that. both like it could be like something i see on the street and i think of something to kind of like a metaphor to like encapsulate the actions that i saw or whatever um it's both like i just i just love um Taking the world and spinning it in my perspective, and mm. in in I love words. Like I'm, like I'm in, like I know it's kind of like Trump, right? I have the best words. You know, like, but like I, <laughs> Good I, impression. I, <laughs> but I, but I really do. Like I love, I love language. I love how, like the history. I started started studying the history of language and how it evolves and how it's like. And what I really learned about language is I'm getting off on a tangent, but like how what I really learned about language is like. There's no concrete definition. There's no really such thing as definitions. Mm. It's just. Like we use the words, like they're just usages, right? And so like, and we just use them to convey emotions. And like that's what's beautiful about rap, and yeah. why why, the, why it's the number one genre in the world right now is because it conveys an emotion that a lot of people relate to. Speaking of emotions, uh, there uh, the new album late February, um, Swan, EP, EP. gotcha, uh, Swan, mm -hmm. um, featuring Xavier Omar. Yeah. Uh, obviously, this is like. For me, it's his lyrical gems all oh, over. But um, lyrics that stood out to me is, uh, how can I argue with your feelings? I can't, how can emotions be wrong? They can't. That's why I wrote you this song, One of These Days When You're you're, you're Strong. And these lyrics stand out because, um, especially how can emotions be wrong, are so true for, you know, relationships with friends, relationships with lovers, but also people who love music. Like, you can't, like, you know, I used to be the biggest a-hole when it came to music. And, no. like, your music sucks, you know, that yeah, type of, you yeah, know, yeah, back... Yeah. But and I was talking to somebody, and he said, and he's an artist, and he said to me, he's like, well, how can I, if, if someone likes it, 
why am I going to be upset that yeah. it makes him feel good? 100%. Um, so can you kind of talk about these lyrics, but talk about, and t- just talk about the overall track? Yeah. I mean, you hit the, you hit the nail on the head, and that was, that was the goal of that, of that line, actually. That's why I, I'm so they, amazing that you did your due diligence, man, because it's like, whatever. But, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I mean, it's just really dope that, like, to hear that's like the shit that you put yeah, yeah. okay. The shit that you put out is um, received in a way that you meant it to be conveyed. And so it's like, um, so what you're talking about is like, how can, I, how can I argue with your feelings? How can emotions be wrong? Like they can't. Right. Emotions aren't wrong, right? And so it, it took me years to come to that conclusion, right? So like that's what I love about that specific track is um, it's like from my perspective anyway, and I could change in 10 years, but it's like from a, an emotionally healthy standpoint, talking to a woman that's not, right? Yeah. And so like that's that's where it's coming from. It's like so at the end of that verse it says, and it's a little controversial, but it says like yo, I guess that silicone's too close to your heart, right? Yeah. And so 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 like that's that whole uh journey of like kind of being true to yourself. And and um I mean that's that's what I that's what I wanted to convey. It's 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 not a uh I don't take it lightly that I like I love when people like get what they get from my art. So I appreciate it. Uh, the track Scarlet Letter, about two minutes and 56, 56 seconds in. Oh, right. I guess it's the outro verse. Yeah. Uh, you say, yeah, sharpen the blade slowly. This holy vodka is flowing. Man, you did. And, you dug deep. <laughs> and and what I like about it, and I, and I bring it up because what it totally reminds you change up your style. Mm-hmm. And the style totally reminds me of um, Deaf Poetry Jam's Black Ice, yeah. uh, who who does, you know, he's a, been on the podcast and he does, I think, incredible work. And, mm-hmm. and you, you, you nail, you nail it. I mean, you know, and and it's great to watch an artist be able to change up his or her style on an album. Um, is that is it was Black Ice the inspiration here, or why change up your style as well on this? So, um, Def Jam poetry was a huge influence on me, huge influence on me, um, and poetry in general. So, who I think the greatest writer of all time is, and I said this in an interview earlier I was on today, but it's it's uh, Saul Williams. Saul Williams, I think, is the greatest writer of all time. Mm-hmm. And I, I put him up against Shakespeare. I put him against Edgar Allan Poe. I put him against, like, who you name it, Langston Hughes, Saul no Williams. Um, I don't know how he feels about that, but that's just how, <laughs> that's just how I feel. And um, uh, he um, was heavy in, <clears throat> excuse me, he was heavy in slam poetry. And so I dabbled in slam poetry. And that's exactly what that, at the end of that song is. It's kind of like slam poetry, mm-hmm. but not as... Animated, right, right. but uh, that's what it is. Um, and so I, I drew, I drew heavy from that in my writing style. It's about imagery. It's about metaphors. It's about um, uh, double entendres, like stuff like that. Like I love that kind of writing, and that's what that's what slam poetry does. And I, a hundred percent, I'm influenced by that. Uh, one line that really kind of, I had a Tom Scott letter that really just like blew me away and like and I was like I gotta ask him what this means but they painted our culture the same color it exposes mm. uh talk about that what is it what is the what are, what are you referencing there that's a deeper line uh uh so it says the, they painted our culture the same color it, is, it exposes and so basically that line is kind of about accountability but it's a deeper rooted issue but it's it's basically saying um Hip hop is in a weird state to me. Hip hop is in a funny state because it's um, it's driven by capitalism, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so and so, that's not a, what it was born in. It was it was it was so so like it's kind of becoming the monster that it was made to destroy, right. right? It was born out of like fight the power. It was born out of like rebellion. It was born out of like we we came from nothing, and now it's it's becoming this like elitist genre. And so, me saying they painted the culture the same color it exposes is kind of saying like, however they view us is kind of like we get what we deserve, mm. unless you're aware of the issues as to why. Like it's a deep, it's a deeper issue, but it's just a broad statement about it. Is I, going? What do you think? Or I, I guess what, what? Yeah. What? What is the responsibility of hip hop now? I mean, is it still? Be rooted in what it's supposed to be, or do you think it's? I don't think it is. Like responsibility is such a subjective term, right? 
but I think that um, it's it's now interwoven with uh, corporate America, and corporate America is rooted in money and greed, right? And if you listen to the music that's being made, that's exactly what it is. So that's what I said. It's, be, it's become the mantra it was yeah. born to destroy, which is kind of a brilliant move by capitalism. But yeah. I mean, it's a whole political talk. But I mean, it celebrates, celebrates. Yeah, it celebrates. It's, it so it you celebrates want, so yeah. elitism. It celebrates the stuff that actually holds our culture back, which is very ironic, right? Yeah. Like, so if you like hear diss tracks nowadays, it's like, I got more money or whatever the case may be, right? But if you look at like the Democratic primary debates, what is the Democratic primary debates about? It's like distribution of wealth, right? right. That's what that party is is pushing. And so hip hop is kind of pushing this narrative of elitism and capitalism and get all this money. And uh, the party that is supposedly writing policy to help these neighborhoods is the antithesis of that. It's confl- it's conflicting, but right. I think it's 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 the, it's the state we're in. Like, I mean, this is just gonna get deeper if you wanted to, but like, <laughs> I already have. <laughs> but no, I th- I, th- I think that hip hop's responsibility now is to um, find an identity, right? Like, you, like you're real pro black, but and you're but you're real pro capitalism. I don't think those two things can coincide. That's a whole other conversation, but that's just my. Do you think it's become? I mean, do you think it's become? I mean, kind of like what more, uh, more what Dr. King said is becoming more of a class a thousand, issue. Thousand, than, thousand percent. Well, I think I think racism and classism are cousins. Right. They're not necessarily not. They're tang- they're, they're interwoven together, um, and I like conservatives love to bang the Dr. King drum. My my yes. kid in the. The same color with the difference. You know, they love to bang that drum, but he was a socialist. Like right, he yeah. was, he was somebody who wanted distribution of wealth and equal opportunities for all people. But they never show that side of him. Like letter from a Birmingham jail. Like yeah, they don't, they no, don't yeah, never, yeah, yeah. they don't ever read that entire thing. And so, um, hip hop has always been the voice for our culture, right? And now that it's the number one genre in the world, it's getting. Uh, I feel like it's kind of getting diluted um, because especially, and, and, and it's, it, there's a lot of variables involved, but like if you look at like like sh- like streaming and stuff like that, how that's kind of changed the game and the quality of content, I feel like kind of goes down because the demand for content is higher, right? Mm-hmm. So if like, I mean, think about it. Like if, you, if I put out an album in a week and somebody's like, man, what's next? Like, how are they digesting right. music, right? And so it's not just me. I know bigger artists feel it probably way more than I do. <clears throat> but if if that's the mindset of the consumer, um, then you're in a position where you can't focus as much on the quality and the content if this is your livelihood. And that's... Well, I feel like I'm in a very privileged position is like, I'm not doing this. I don't care if anybody buys it. Like, I would love it if people vibe to it and listen to it. And it's amazing. <clears throat> That's a win. But this is an expression of myself. Like, right. I'm just extremely fortunate to be able to in the position I'm in. And, and somebody like Nas can hear my stuff and I'm signed under the, oh, yeah, that yeah. label. That's That's crazy to me in itself. But like, especially looking at his pedigree, right? And so like, all those things considered, I think that... Um, if you're a bigger artist, you should be a little more cognizant of of the social aspects of the music that you put out. Um, yeah, I mean it's 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 it's. I mean, what a lot of artists say is that I they, they if they want to make art, they can't be in this business because yeah. you know, I think Farrah Monch once said like he can't. Oh, ah, it's just my guy. He's amazing. I mean, he's but he's like I can't make albums like I want to because. Like I want a black thought on the album. I want so and so on black thought is obviously really busy doing mm-hmm. other things. So it's like, but it's hard to make a living off. Like you can't, you can't afford to work on an album. If you're an artist trying to make, if this is your livelihood, you can't afford to work on an album for a whole year. You have to like drop at least, you know. How crazy! And how uh, crazy is that? Is you have to jeopardize your passion in order to get a dollar from it. So wait, so why? I guess why if, if this is. If, this is all happening, right? Like, why, 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 why get, why for you get into, into this art form? 
I don't make that kind of music. Right. Right. And so like I'm I'm probably aware that it'll never be mainstream. It'll never be and and not like on some like the hating. That's not that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying like I don't make the kind of music that's gonna make the club yeah. bounce. Right. I make the music that's like like if you want to like four hour drive to your neighboring state. Right. Like you throw me on yeah. and like you feel that shit. You right. know what I mean? Like that's that's what I that's it's like whenever I'm like I said when I'm living it laying in my box like. My kids can listen to the music I made and be proud of that shit. And not saying that people can't be proud of club music, <clears throat> do that. But it's like I tried to, um, like, influence or change the narrative of our culture. Like mm-hmm. that's and that's that's from my perspective, right? And I can be I can be wholly wrong, right? Hundred hundred years from now, I'll be like, yo, it was way off. <laughs> but like, it was it was my attempt at it, and I'm cool with that. I'm alright with that. Is that a conversation that I mean? Uh, you have with other artists, you have with mass appeal artists. Uh, I mean, is that kind of like, do you see there's like a group of artists that are trying to make that push to kind of have hip hop go back to its roots and kind of take it back? Well, I, I think it's uh, it's like herding snakes at this point, right? <laughs> it's <laughs> like um, a herding cats. I don't want to say snakes. <laughs> but it's like, there's, So much involved in making music now, right? Like, as in fact, from a label's perspective, like they want to return on their investment. Um, that's business. That's capitalism. That's America, right. right? And so, like, when all of those factors start to get involved, um, there's a lot of pressure. There's people's jobs on the line. Like these business execs have kids and they gotta feed their kids. And like, so it's like I, I'm not necessarily blaming those people. It's like it's a it's a systemic issue. Um, and so, all all I can like I, like I said, it's, it's a very privileged position. Like I I didn't need to sign with Master Pill, but I did it because it was like it's authentic. They were interested, I was yeah. interested, and it just shows me that it's like yo, the music that I'm making, it, it's it's legit, it's genuine, it's authentic. Um, but there's nothing, um, I, like I, I highly doubt like I'm gonna make the next club banger. Like right. you know what I mean? And I'm not looking to like I'm just looking to touch people who are going through. Things that I went through, and to me that's a that's a win. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna make the best music I can for sure. I would love if a million people bang this shit, but if it doesn't happen, yeah, man, I'm not gonna rap about chains. <laughs> how, how, how do you go from? Um, I mean, you, you come off and your music comes off as very humble, right? I mean, you I mean, and I ask this because you go from the you know leading rusher, you know, for the for the Texans. Yeah. And you know, there, and then you're coming into this new, 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 new venture, new, you know, right. and and you're not there, but you could probably, I I would assume, but maybe I could be wrong, pull that card in a weird way right. to be like, all right, listen to my shit because I am, you know, who I was, you know, you know right. what I did. Like, how do you the capitalism card? Yeah, exactly. Right, you're like because right. so I got how, it. Yeah. How do you, um, I guess yeah. How do you humble yourself? Um. I didn't grow up with money, right? So I grew up in a household where, um, uh, like, I remember vividly, like, a few times, man, my mom said, like, yo, we don't have any food tonight, so you just got to go to bed. Mm-hmm. And so, like, I, those memories are etched in my in my brain. And then I go anywhere. And so I understood at a young age it wasn't about money. It was about the circumstance. Like, it is about money, but it's not, right? And so, like, when I got it, that's when it didn't heighten that feeling was that, um, it changed people around you, and so like I've always tried to stay as authentic to myself as possible. And so coming into a new genre, where I know I have the means to do what I want to do, I know I have the means to take care of myself and my family and change uh, my family's trajectory. Um, it's never something that uh, <clears throat> was sexy to me. Like mm-hmm. I never looked at Diddy or Hove or Drake or. Ken or Cole and none of like, like, I shouldn't say Cole because he don't really rap about that stuff. But it's like Kanye or any of these cats that like promote that stuff. Um, uh, as like uh, man, that's cool that they rich, yeah, right? As yeah, I yeah. never looked at it like that. I always looked at it like I didn't. They didn't draw to like I didn't. I wasn't drawn to them because they were rich. I drew them because of their passion, their work, ambition, and you know their drive. Mm. And so it's never something that was. Appealing to me, it's it's not appealing to me. I think it's actually detrimental. 
not talking about it because rap about your experience. Do you know express yourself how you want to express yourself. Um, but for me, I feel like a lot of society is not able to distinguish like the farce from like reality. Right. So like when you see these people uh, with these chains and these girls and these cars, like it's not reality. Those <clears throat> those girls are trying to model. Like most of those cars are rented, right? right? The jewelry is probably rented, right? A lot of these people are in debt, right? Like right. so, or, like they don't understand the reality of the situation, and so that's that's an aspiration to them. And it was never to me because I understood real early on, like how shit can depreciate. Right. Right. <laughs> so it like I mean to be honest, it's just like I understand that economics, like I understand how this that world and how it works. Like I'm involved in many different businesses, and I understand how that. How to operate in that world. Right. Well, it's like the roots had the uh, what would they do video mm -hmm. years back, and it was all like, you know, rent it, you know, they would put it like on a stove, rent it car. Thousand percent. Or, yeah. yeah, thousand percent. Um, you know, you look at the uh, the EP late February and the uh, the artwork, uh, flowers, uh, and then you reference in I think majority of the tracks, there's a one or two that you don't. You you do reference roses or mm -hmm. some or flowers. Um, what's the significance of flowers on this album? It's not necessarily uh, metaphorical, but I think it's just um, not not metaphorical for anything intentionally. But I think when you're talking about, uh, I, I wanted to make an entire EP. It was going to be seven songs, and there was a few I left off that I'm kind of regretting I didn't put on because it was dope as fuck. But um, made a judgment call. But um, <clears throat> when you talk about love in general, there's like there's just there's certain uh, items that kind of you yeah exude that you know imagery right. right and so um but the album was dope because it was like i mean if you look at like the like the like the very last song is called like miscarry right yeah it's about it's about a miscarriage i have that i had but like um, i shared with a young lady who like when i was like 19 years old i was oh, a young wow. kid and um, it's just about like the trials and 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 the situations of, about like love Right, and so that was the, what the CP was about was about like the situations that I've have, I've been in my life about just about love in general, and so how it's like a bittersweet thing. So mm. like, the hanging of the roses is kind of that. Uh, lastly, if, is there a uh, maybe a lyric on this album, the CP that kind of either you're floored or blown away with that you wrote that's like oh crap I'm. I'm can't believe I'm I did gonna, that I shit. Can't believe I did it. <laughs> or even one that says like this is kind of sums up. What my mission was with this EP. Damn, that's a question you prepped me with. But uh <laughs> <laughs> surprise. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> um well, okay, so just just the first just the first couple bars of Miss Carrie is just dope. To me, anyway. I said, uh, cause like so the song's called Miss Carrie, and it's obviously an entendre off of Miss uh Miscarriage. Miss Carrie, yeah. And it says, um, Dear Miss Carrie, the situation was scary. Two teenagers that was very in love, but love loses the life. To me, that's just so dope yeah. because it's like I feel like everybody's experienced that. Like they got, they had one that the one that got away. That's kind of exudes that is like love loses the life. That's dope to me. Like yeah. it's just kind of like, and that's kind of the epitome of the entire EP. Is like love, love loses the life. Like shit happens, and and you got to roll with it. And and sometimes you you do things. Um, that in hindsight weren't the best decision, but you're here and you got to deal with it. Uh, new EP is a late February. Uh, Bobby Fino, yeah. uh, thank you so much for joining me at the library two minutes ago. It's a great, great EP, and all your work is incredible. So, man, I appreciate, I appreciate it. This is the most in depth interview about my stuff. I, I think you're the only one that actually listened to my shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, dope. I appreciate it, man. Much love, baby. Yes, sir.